This bike behind me is the 2021 Specialized Stump Jumper Evo, which is the rowdier, burlier, slacker, longer and lower cousin of the standard Stump Jumper trail bike. Now, we all know the Stump Jumper is widely regarded as one of the most popular trail bikes in the world. The Stump Jumper Evo takes it up a level, and I was lucky enough to ride it on some of the best terrain in the Scottish borders just outside Peebles. Fortunately for me, the weather was fantastic, so I got a great idea of how the new bike feels. I'll be going into some detail about how the new bike rides a little later on in the video, but first, let's look at the changes for 2021. The most notable changes about the 2021 Stumper are the increase in available sizes. There are now six sizes that you can buy from S1 to S6. There are also four models in the new range. Now the four models all have the same fat M11 carbon frame set, but varying component specs. The most affordable is the Comp that retails for £3,900. The most expensive is £9,250 and that's for the S-Work bike right behind me. Unfortunately, at the moment, whilst we're making this video, we don't have US pricing available, but you can expect them to be quite expensive. Unlike the outgoing Stumpy Evo that was available in 27.5 and 29 inch wheels, the new one is only available with 29 inch hoops. However, like the old bike, it still has 150 millimeters of rear wheel travel. But for those people who are a little bit shorter, you needn't worry about the 29 inch wheel bike being larger than the old smallest 650B bike. Specialized has assured us that the 29er S1 bike has a lower standover height than the old S2 650B bike. Even though for the most part, it's only available 29 inch wheels, there is a factory mullet option. That means the front wheel's diameter is 29 inches and the rear one is 27.5 inches. The mullet bike is called the LTD Carbon. Now that doesn't mean that it's limited in numbers, it's just the name of the bike. And it comes equipped with a RockShox Z fork and RockShox Deluxe rear coil shock. This seems to follow a recent trend by a lot of manufacturers, Specialized included with their new status bike and demo downhill bike to include mullet options from the factory. Other updates include increased SWAT storage capacity. Now SWAT is Specialized name for the onboard storage compartment inside the bike's down tube. They told us that SWAT storage is increased by 15%. Okay, so that was a quick introduction to the new bike. Now I'm gonna drill down into some interesting facts about the new frame. The frame's carbon construction is claimed to hit the Goldilocks balance between being super stiff and mega flexy. They say this has been achieved by their sidearm strut that's asymmetrically placed on one side of the bike on the right hand side and it spans between the shock mount on the top of the top tube to the linkage mount point on the seat tube. Specialized says the sidearm reduces frame twist and has been tuned to give a unified feel from front to back. The frames have also been tuned and built with specific rider weights in mind. So for example, a 120 kilogram rider on an S6 bike will have the same feel as someone who weighs 50 kilos riding an S1 bike. Specialized calls this technology Rider First Engineered. And it's basically the culmination of a massive amount of data acquisition and rider feedback that they've used to generate where they need to put more material or less material to tune the bike's feel. <laughs> Included with the bike is a 625 milliliter shaped and flexible SWAT bottle. That means you can store water inside the frame. The internal SWAT bladder can also be removed and replaced with whatever you fancy to store inside the SWAT compartment. 
and there's a handy SWAT tool stashed in the top of the steerer tube. Now, it's important to forget that the Stump Jumper Evo is still a trail bike. That means weight is a consideration and Specialized has worked really hard to try and keep weight down. The S4 frame, including shock and all hardware, weighs a claimed 2,750 grams. Now, unfortunately, we weren't able to weigh a frame set only. I've just got a full bike here. But on the scales, without pedals, the S4 bike, as you see behind me, weighs 13.92 kilos. And finally, there are a few other nifty details. There's an integrated chain slap protector on the chain stays that's been specially designed to reduce the noise generated by the chain hitting the chain stays. There's an integrated down tube protector and the bike has full internal cable routing with cable guides for the full length of the frame. So the bike's frame is packed with features, but that's not where it stops. The suspension has also been tuned for the new frame. Even though it's only got 150 millimeters of rear travel, Specialized claims the new Stump Jumper has been tuned to have an impressively progressive suspension curve. Now that means when the suspension's at the start of its travel, it's nice and supple. And then as the suspension compresses through the bike's travel, it gets harder and harder as it resists bottom out. The leverage rate is relatively linear in the way it progresses. That means it doesn't suddenly ramp up, it gets predictably harder as the bike goes through its travel. The bike's axle path has been tuned to have a small portion of rearward movement. Now that means the back wheel is able to move out of the way of speed slapping square edged hits. For 2021, the new Stump Jumper Evo is offered in six sizes. Now, specialized sizing is based around your riding style. That means you don't need to think about, or at least specialized claims, your inseam measurement for which size bike you go for. They've managed to do this by keeping seat tube length and standover height low across their range of sizes. Standover heights and seat tube lengths from size one to size six change by 37 millimeters and 80 millimeters respectively, which isn't a big amount. Specialized sizing naming convention can be equated to traditional sizing. So the S1 bike on the Stump Jumper Evo is the equivalent to an extra small. The S6 bike is an extra, extra large. However, depending on how you like your bike to ride, Specialized says that you can go for one size lower or one size bigger than you would normally. A size lower bike will generally feel flickier and more responsive, and the size bigger should feel more stable and calm. Specialized has also fitted size specific chainstay lengths to their bikes. The S1 to S4 bikes have 438 or 443 millimeter chainstays depending on whether they're in the high or low bottom bracket setting, while the S5 and S6 bikes have 443mm to 453mm chainstay lengths, once again depending on that bottom bracket height. So a little more on that adjustable bottom bracket height. Like a lot of new bikes out there, the Stump Jumper Evo is super adjustable. The bottom bracket height adjustment is thanks to a flip chip on the Horst Link pivot. Now that's the pivot just in front of the rear axle. Adjusting the flip chip changes the bottom bracket height from 331 millimeters to 343 millimeters, depending on which headset cups are fitted to the bike. Now the headset cups mean that the head angle is also independently adjustable to the wheelbase and bottom bracket height. Supplied with the bike are two separate headset cups that can adjust the head angle from 65.5 degrees all the way down to 63 degrees in the ultra slack setting. A 63 degree head angle on a trail bike is mighty impressive and something that's music to my ears. When the bottom bracket height adjustment and the headset cup adjusters are all combined, 
it gives you six possible different geometry configurations for the Stump Jumper Evo. From the factory, the bike is delivered with the high bottom bracket setting and middle headset cup. Taking the S4 as an example, which is the equivalent to a size large bike in the stock settings, it has a 475 millimeter reach and a 64.5 degree head angle. Elsewhere, the wheelbase is 1,247 millimeters long, while the chainstays are 438 millimeters. The effective seat tube angle sits at 76.9 degrees. What models are available in the new Stumpy Evo platform? Well, we get a lot of comments about price and the cheapest carbon Stumpy Evo comes out at £3,900. It's fitted with Fox's performance suspension and Shimano SLX drivetrain and brakes. At the other end of the spectrum, the S-Works version that's behind me is fitted with SRAM's XX1 Eagle AXS drivetrain and dropper seat post and retails for a whopping £9,250. However, for that money, you get Carbon Roval SL wheels and Fox's top of the range factory suspension. The pretty spicy mullet wheeled Evo LTD Carbon retails for £6,000. On that bike, you get a mix of GX Eagle and X01 Eagle plus RockShox suspension. So with all of the heavy, detail thick stuff out of the way, I'm sure you want to know how the new bike rides. Fortunately for me, the 2021 Stump Jumper Evo was launched on my local trails. I rode the inner Leathan downhill trails on an uplift day with adrenaline uplift. Now that did mean there wasn't much uphill pedaling, but plenty of descending. Unfortunately, because there wasn't a huge amount of uphill pedaling, I didn't actually get to test out how the bike climbs. But take one look at the geometry and you can speculate that it's gonna be pretty good. The fairly steep effective seat tube angle should make your weight quite central on the bike and help with those really steep climbs. Keep tuned for a full review when I really put the bike through its paces and I'll be able to give you a proper lowdown on its climbing performance. Because the Stump Jumper is trying to be the ultimate trail bike, there's a pretty heavy emphasis on the downhills and it's where the Stumpy Evo really shows its true colors. I was very impressed with the bike's rear suspension. Now Specialized weren't lying when they said it was progressive. On the smaller hits, it irons out trail chatter pretty well. And I was actually quite surprised at how smooth it felt over successive bumps. And it didn't get overwhelmed or choked when things got really rough on repetitive hits. Now I put this down to the impressive performing DPX2 rear shock, the suspension kinematic and the slightly rearward axle path. That said, the progressivity of the bike does have some limits, although it is around 19.35% progressive when you do the maths, it still required a fair amount of air in the spring to keep it propped up through bigger holes and be able to push through berms and compressions to generate speed. I started with 175 PSI in the rear shop, but had to up that to 195 PSI with four clicks of low speed compression adjustment. That's for a 73 kilogram weight. Once the suspension was set up to my preferences, it allowed me to push really hard. And I found that the Stump Jumper Evo was a predictable partner in crime to tackle some of the toughest trails on the inner Leven Hill. Even more impressively, once I'd increased spring pressure in the rear shock, small bump compliance didn't fly out the window and the bike still provided plenty of grip and comfort over those small chattery bumps. The one thing I would say is that the rebound tune on the rear shock felt pretty heavy and I had to unwind all of the external rebound adjustment to get it feeling how I wanted it. Lighter riders might struggle to get the rebound feeling quick enough for them. 
Unsurprisingly, Fox's 36 fork with the Grip 2 damper was well matched to the rear suspension of the bike. That meant the front and rear suspension was well balanced and I never got bucked fore or aft thanks to a lack of rebound or compression damping. To top it off, the Grip 2 damper was easy to adjust when I wanted to make adjustments and the adjustments I did make had a marked effect on the bike's handling. When you couple the bike's impressive suspension with its really capable geometry, the Stump Jumper Evo feels as close to an enduro as you could possibly get. Although the stock settings that the bike was delivered with felt okay on flatter and slower terrain, once things picked up or got a little steeper, I wanted to slacken the head tube angle out and lower the bottom bracket a little bit. Once I set the bike to the low position, it set the head angle to 64 degrees and decreased the bottom bracket height to 333 millimeters. This also increased the wheelbase to 1,241 millimeters and increased the chainstay length to 443 millimeters. Once the bike was in this setting, the steeper trails became easier. Now I put this down to the head angle being slacker, but also lowering the bottom bracket increased the chainstay length and this improved the front to back balance of the bike and made me feel more central. Also, because the head angle was only set to 64 degrees, I knew it could go a whole degree slacker to 63. This meant if I wanted to go faster or ride even steeper trails, the possibility and the option is there. Initial impressions mean quite a lot on a bike and the Stump Jumper Evo made me feel at home pretty much right away. Now that's a good sign because it means there's nothing quirky going on and nothing that you as a rider will need to adapt to to make the bike work well. Unsurprisingly, the monumentally expensive S-Works version spec impressed me and worked well. However, there was one little problem. Because Specialized has done such a great job with shortening seat tube lengths and lowering standover heights, I found that the dropper post which is 170 millimeter travel AXS, couldn't be set high enough to be comfortable on the climbs, yet low enough on the descents. The solution to this problem is to spec a lower stack, longer travel dropper post, such as One Up's Dropper V2. Now, strangely, that exact dropper post is fitted to the LTD Mullet bike, but it would be nice to see that option extended to the entire Stump Jumper Evo range. Also, as promised, Specialized has struck a great balance with the overall ride feel, and I never felt like there was a load of trail buzz being put back through my hands and feet, and neither did the bike feel vague or wondery, and I was able to stick some pretty hefty off-camber lines over massive chundry bumps without issue. As the icing on the cake, the inbuilt chainstay protector did a great job of reducing chain slap and noise. This meant the ride was really quiet, so you could concentrate on hammering downhill rather than listening to your bike destroy itself. So what can we conclude from this? Well, the 2021 Specialized Stump Jumper Evo certainly feels like a model in its own right, rather than an experiment to gauge appetite for a slightly more extreme trail bike. It's managed to feel like a model in its own right thanks to a whole host of different sizes and plenty of spec options. The frame's also nice and refined with a load of neat touches that gives it a real premium feel. However, you would have to expect this for a bike that costs over £9,000. I'd personally like to see longer travel dropper posts on the whole range or at least the option to spec them. Equally, it would be great to see a Fox 38 or RockShox Z fork offered on a thorough 29-inch model bike rather than just the mullet. Now, I feel this would bridge the gap between the Stump Jumper Evo and the Enduro. Overall, though, the Stump Jumper Evo certainly feels like it's able to tackle any terrain you could throw its way and certainly feels like a step up from the standard Stump Jumper and I'm pretty sure that's what Specialized were hoping. What do you think of the 2021 Stump Jumper Evo? Could this be Specialized best trail bike yet? Or does it come too close to the scope of an Enduro? 
Obviously, this all carbon model is pretty expensive. Would you prefer a cheaper alloy version? Let us know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get a notification whenever we upload a new video.